Are you trusting God for a torrent of blessings in your life? Have you been expecting Him to bless you and the works of your hand? You don't have to wait anymore. God is about to release a decade of blessings upon you. Are you wondering how this would happen? Then watch this video to find out. You will learn more about God's blessings and how to attract them into your life. God has more than enough to bless everybody. He can do abundantly above all that you can ask from Him. So, when He says He's about to release a decade of blessings upon you, you don't need to doubt Him. Why? He has done it in the lives of many of His servants. And yes, He can do it to your life today. What does a decade of blessings mean? This refers to torrents of blessings that exceed your comprehension. It goes beyond what you can ever ask from Him. This form of blessing even outlives you. If you think this cannot happen, remember that God said in the scriptures that He is God and nothing is too hard for Him to do. Do you believe God is a great provider? If you do, to what extent? Many do believe that God can settle their little bills. Yes, He can pay your house rent and the kids tuition and build you a house. If all you believe God can do for you stops here, then you've limited Him. What God wants to do in your life transcends your basic needs. It moves beyond your expectations. God wants to expand you. He wants to establish you. He wants to make you an icon in this season. He will take you out of the low ranks and set you on the top. This is the kind of blessing that lasts for decades. And if you doubt this, remember that Luke 1.37 says, For no word from God will ever fail. This can only happen in the lives of those that believe. Therefore, attach faith to his words today and experience a mighty turnaround. There's no limit to how God can bless you. And if you think that it will always take a lot of time, then you are wrong. He can orchestrate events to move to you in the highest position in your environment. Take the case of Mordecai as a good example. The night before, he was a slave, awaiting the massive execution of himself and his tribe. But in the morning, he sat with the king as one of his princes. God can do the same in your life today. Also, remember that God does not take pride in measuring your life according to your past. If you confess your sins, He forgives and sets you on top. He doesn't stop His blessings from flowing into your life. I don't know what you might have done. God does not remember that anymore. Therefore, He will soon do something new in your life. Isaiah 43, 18-19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let this word be your anchor as you expect God's blessings upon your life. If he does not remember your past, why then should you dwell on them? However things might become extremely hard before they become easy. What do I mean by that? You may experience a lot of hardship and setbacks before enjoying God's blessings. Why? God wants to enlarge you for His massive blessings. Therefore, He might make things a bit difficult for you. At this point, don't give up on God. Keep trusting Him to turn your situation around. And perhaps, you are in that situation right now. You've lost your job. Your business has become bankrupt. There's no help from any part of the world. You have given up on yourself. You don't believe you can ever be anything again. You've lost all hope. God is speaking to you right now. He says you shouldn't worry because this phase of your life will soon end. Are you struggling with a chronic illness? This has swallowed all of your finances. God wants you to know that this is not your end. You will also partake in his blessings today. And the very blessing for you is the blessing of healing. God will heal you miraculously then this would pave the way for other kind of blessings. You may be in your waiting season. This shouldn't push you into thinking God has forgotten you. It's called the waiting season, not the abandoning season. God will never abandon you. Yeah, I know you've been waiting for a long time, but then this is only a sign that your blessing will be greater than those you see shining today. God loves all of his children equally, but he doesn't bless them equally. And ironically, the more you wait, the greater the blessing. So, if you see someone flourishing today, note their net worth and multiply it by a million. That's what God wants to do for you and even more. So keep waiting. 
keep learning all that God wants you to learn. Immerse yourself in His presence, and you will see His blessings coming upon you in torrents. Let your faith come alive again. God has you in mind. 2 Corinthians 9, 8-11 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This verse says that God will bless your life so that you can bless others. However, God's blessings do not come by luck. You have a role to play. So, what can you do to attract God's blessings? What will God use as an impetus to deliver His blessings upon your life? The very first thing is to keep His commandments. Deuteronomy 28, 1-2 says, If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all His commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set your high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Don't let anyone downplay the essence of keeping God's commandments. Many believe that if you don't add a little crookedness to your path, you can't become successful. That's a blatant lie. Don't believe that falsehood. Your blessings are in your keeping God's commands. That's how God knows you will respect Him in all your ways. So, do you want decades of blessings upon your life? Then keep God's command. Obey His voice, trust me, His blessings will not elude you. Also, you must place priority on the works of your hands. God isn't a magician. He needs to multiply something to bless you. Even when Jesus wanted to perform the miracle of multiplication of bread and fish, they didn't suddenly appear. No, He looked out for someone having something at hand and blessed it. This way, we know God won't do anything with an empty hand. My question now to you is, what is in your hands? What can God use as a catalyst for your blessings? If you have none, you need to work towards getting one today. And if you don't know what to do, go to God and ask for direction. He's your creator. He knows what is best for you. He will tell you what to do and place his blessings upon it. So, take that leap of faith today. Learn that skill. Start that business. Utilize that idea in your mind. It may look small, but that's your password to greatness. And then, what are the gifts that God has placed in you? This is also a great way to attract God's blessings. Proverbs 18:16 says, A person's gift makes room for him and brings him before great people. God has deposited something in your life. He has endowed you with a special gift from heaven. This is what you need to live a prosperous life. God wants you to discover this gift and use it to expand yourself. This points to a central truth. You don't need to run to and from the earth before God blesses you. What you need is a journey of self-discovery. Once you discover yourself, you enjoy His blessings upon your life. This gift will lead you to men who will become God's channel of blessings for your life. When Solomon wanted to build God's temple, what set Huram Abi apart from others was his gift. This made him the head of Solomon's workforce. I'm sure that position must have greatly blessed the man's life. After all, where else can you receive more blessings except working for the king? This is what you will experience when you discover your gift. So, put your heart on this and begin the journey of self-discovery. This is the path to unlocking God's blessings upon your life. Another way to tap into decades of blessings is to immerse yourself in God's service. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Many Christians haven't discovered that one of the viable keys to God's provisions is working in His sanctuary. This doesn't necessarily mean in the church. However, it encompasses having a yearning for souls. It involves having a passion to see God's will done on earth. When you base your life on this, God will bless you abundantly. Why? You've joined yourself to Him. You've jetsoned all to follow Him. This will necessitate both physical and spiritual blessings. 
Are you seeking the kingdom of God in all his righteousness? Are you not running after the things of the world? Stop chasing flashy things. Deter your mind from mundane things. Keep your heart on God's service. Be ready to go when he calls. The rate at which his blessings overflow into your life will surprise you. Then you need to apply the law of giving. Oh, this surprised you. Yeah, you need God's blessings. But if you don't give, you can't receive. The Bible even says that if you withhold more than you need, you will live in penury. But when you give out, you will enjoy God's blessings. What does God specifically want from you? Malachi 3, 10-12 says, Bring the whole teeth into the storehouse, and there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. From these verses, God is requesting two major things, your tith and offering. And as you can see, this immediately opens the door of blessings upon you. It's a cause and effect principle. Do you want blessings? Pay your teeth and offering. It's as simple as that. Many do a tag payment of teeth as old fashioned. This isn't biblical. Those who hold to this notion are only shortchanging themselves. To attract blessings into your life, pay your teeth and offering and do good to others around you. Ensure you do all these to prepare yourself for God's blessing. Remember, they are inexhaustible. Even if God makes every man a millionaire, it will not reduce heaven's treasures. Everything will keep increasing because the source is infinite. So in what area are you expecting God to bless you? In what dimension do you want his blessings? God can bless you physically. This is usually the very desire of every man. And yes, God desires to bless you physically. He said in his word that he wants you to prosper even as your soul prospers. God does not want you to lack physical needs. As long as you trust him and keep his commands, you will enjoy his physical blessings. When Jesus was on the earth, he never lacked any good thing because God provided all he needed. If you can put your whole heart on God, you will have the same testimony. And if you desire spiritual blessings, God can give them to you. Do you desire the gift of the Holy Spirit? Are you thirsting for the fruits? God can give them all to you. He even delights in this because it aligns with his nature. Unfortunately, many do not count this as a blessing. But yes, it is. It's a blessing that can activate other blessings. So if this is what you desire, God will release it to you. Very close to this is the blessing of his presence. The Bible says that there's fullness of joy in God's presence. The chaos and noise in the world have sapped many of joy. They may have physical prosperity, but spiritually, they lack joy. If this is what you desire, God can release these blessings upon you. He will fill your heart with joy, and you will know no sorrow again. There's no greater blessing than his presence. It grants you peace of mind and secures all that you have. Also, his presence grants you access to his voice. He can even begin to share ideas that will lead to a massive breakthrough for you. Another dimension of God's blessings is having godly and profitable influences around you. When your friends are constantly gearing you towards godliness, God has blessed you with a decade of blessings. How? They will keep encouraging you to do better. And while doing that, your doors and breakthroughs begin to open. They will suggest godly opportunities that will lead to years of unparalleled success. Think about this. What would Esther have done without her uncle Mordecai? Mordecai stood as a relational blessing to Esther. He led her to the throne. Her life became a testimony today. Now, let's dig deeper into the scriptures to see those who have received God's decades of blessings. This will reassure you that you can also receive God's decades of blessings. The first among them is Abraham. Genesis 12, 1-3 says, The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. 
I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This verse reveals where God promised to bless Abraham. When you study his life, you discover that this blessing came to reality. While journeying to the promised land, God blessed him with cattle, and he became the richest man at the time. And today, everyone still connects with the blessing upon him. God truly blessed him with decades of blessings. But then, this anchored on one fact. Abraham obeyed God. He didn't doubt God when he told him to leave his father's land. And if you think Abraham's blessings stopped at physical prosperity, you are mistaken. He also enjoyed spiritual blessings. He was the first man to negotiate God's decisions. Yet, there's another man who enjoyed more blessings than Abraham, and that was Isaac. Genesis 26, 12-14 says, Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. When men begin to envy you, God has blessed you beyond proportion. This was the height of Isaac's blessings. When you study carefully, you will see that Isaac became prosperous through the works of his hands. If he had not planted, he couldn't have reaped a hundredfold. He knew the law of sowing and reaping, and God blessed him. God won't hesitate to do the same for you if you sow something. He won't hesitate to bless you if you utilize the works of your hands. Another person who enjoyed God's blessings was Solomon. God told him in 1 Kings 3, 12-13, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. Solomon knew one of the keys to attracting God's blessings. He went to God and asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for blessings as many would have asked. Instead, he asked for wisdom to lead God's people right. God saw his wise heart and decided to bless him with every other good thing. These instances show that God can give you decades of blessings. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, what are the things that can stop God's decades of blessings from coming to pass in your life? Even if God has promised to release his blessings upon you, he will do nothing if these things are in you. The very first among them is unbelief. If you want God's blessings upon your life, you need to trust him to do it. You won't receive anything if you don't believe in his power and might. The Bible says that he that comes to God must believe that he exists and rewards those that diligently seek him. When you read the scripture and find a word that resonates with you, claim it as yours. Don't doubt it. God said he will chase away the canker worm from your endeavor. Hold on to it. Don't let the devil cheat you with unbelief. He knows and that once you don't believe, you can't receive. Put him to shame today. Trust God even when it doesn't make sense. Then he will bestow his blessings upon you. Another blessing blocker is leaning on your understanding. Everything about your life should depend on God. Once you have a division of you that does not align with him, you stand to fail. Once you begin to walk after your carnal thoughts, danger is inevitable. You can't receive his blessings that way. Therefore, lean on God. Ask and trust his guidance in all situations. Let him decide the path you take. When this becomes your lifestyle, he will bless you beyond your measure. Remember, there's a limitation to your understanding, but God's wisdom is infinite. Then, you need to let go of pride and arrogance. Many people can't abase themselves before God. Thus, he finds it hard to pour his blessings upon them. Imagine a child standing on a long stool and facing you head on, claiming to be tall. If you want to give the child something, you won't be able to because he's already claiming to be like you. That's what pride does to you. It makes you look at God in the face. Such an audacity will get you no blessing from him. Humble yourself under his mighty hands today and let him lift you. Also, avoid resting on the arms of the flesh. Have you put your hope in someone and only pray as formality? Then you are resting on the arms of flesh. Such a life will get you nothing from your maker. 
He can't release decades of blessings upon you because your heart is far from him. And if he tells you to leave the person, you will still refuse. But you don't know that this might be the only link to his blessings upon your life. Don't lean on the flesh. Trust in God. Rest in his arms. They are wide enough for you. Another blessing blocker is the refusal to let go of the past. What happens if you are leading a child forward, but he keeps looking back? The child delays you and slows down the journey. That's what you do when you focus on the past. God wants to bless you immensely. However, you will keep delaying yourself if you don't focus on the future. Face your shepherd. Don't think about what you've lost. Focus on where you are set to gain. So let go of the hurt and disappointment. Forgive anyone that had hurt you. Position yourself rightly for God's blessings. Then a big blessing blocker is unrighteousness. The Bible says that anyone who covers his sins shall not prosper. If you want to prosper in all you do, you must let go of all your sins. You need to live righteously. You need to forsake anything that the devil can capitalize on in your life. This will make you holy and acceptable before God. He will readily bestow his blessings upon you because you fulfilled your part of the bargain. Treasures are waiting in heaven. Make yourself available by living holy. Another blessing blocker is laziness. God won't bless a lazy man. Why? He would squander God's blessings. He won't put it in profitable ventures because he is lazy. The Bible says, whatever your hands find doing, do it well. The scripture didn't say do it averagely or how you think you should do it. It says to do it well. To attract decades of blessings, you must be an expert at what you do. You can't leave any room for laxity. This is how you can stay above others in your field. Put in the work today, God will bless your diligence. Surprisingly, your attitude also determines your blessings. If you are not a compassionate person, God will not bless you. You need to love others as yourself. It's a prerequisite to your blessings. If God blesses a high-handed person, he will use that blessing to afflict others. So, God won't bless them. Check yourself. Are you hostile toward others? Do you find others irritating? This might be a reason why God hasn't blessed you. Learn to live in love because God is love. When you begin to practice good neighborliness and compassion, God will bless you. God hasn't blessed you, probably because you've not asked. Yeah, God knows your needs. He knows the problems in your life. However, he wants you to ask. This is what can authenticate him to move on your behalf. The Bible says you should ask and you will receive. The instruction wasn't to assume God knows and should do it. No, go before his throne and ask for what you need. If you need financial breakthroughs, ask God for it. If yours is spiritual blessings, don't hesitate to ask. Jesus has said that whatever you ask in his name, believe it and they will be yours. Perhaps you've been asking without seeing anything. This might mean that you've been asking amiss, or perhaps you are asking for a selfish thing. You need God's blessings to do what? Oppress others? Become proud? Even if you don't say it, God sees your heart. Therefore, screen your motives before praying. And likewise, you must trust God's timing for you. God might still be preparing you for your blessings. This, however, shouldn't stop your prayers. If you can pray sincerely, God will release decades of blessings upon you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, because I know your decades of blessings will not elude me. You will release them into every corner of my life. You will lead me into prosperity, and I will not lack anything good. Lord, please forgive me of all my iniquities. Clear my records of sins. Help me do away with anything that can debar your blessings in my life. I haven't been walking in your way. This has blocked your blessings over my life. I confess all today and retrace my steps back to you. Help me to live a new life from now on. I pray that you release your decades of blessings upon the works of my hands. Whatever I lay my hands on shall prosper. I will reap the good fruits of the land. You bless the work of Isaac's hands, and the Philistines envied him. Lord, bless me until my enemies envy me. They've thought I would amount to nothing. Give them a big shock over my life. Show yourself as the God who blesses men. I will always chase excellence in all I do. I will not settle for mediocrity. This I am sure. 
will increase your blessings upon my life. Lord, release your decades of blessings upon my household. Make a way where there seems to be no way for us. Perform mighty signs and wonders in our midst. Connect us with our destiny helper. Enlarge our coast and let men reckon with your blessings over our lives. Bless my kids with wisdom. Bless my spouse with unparalleled favor. Make us an icon and let us succeed in all our endeavors. Father Abraham's blessings were generational. Please do the same in my generation. Let your blessings over my life outlive me. Lord, establish lifelong relationships that will lead to decades of blessings in my life. Pair me with men who will hold my hands on the path of destiny. I detach from anyone who will stop me from receiving your blessings. However, I will not rest on the arms of flesh. I choose to trust only you. You are the one that can lead me to fulfillment, Lord. I ask for spiritual prosperity. This is the most important blessing. Please bless me with more spiritual gifts. Help me to bear more fruits in you. I must keep enjoying the blessings of your presence. I will not lose my faith in you. I will not lean on my understanding. I choose to live righteously. When I receive your blessings, I will not be proud or arrogant. I will be compassionate towards others. I choose not to live in the past anymore. I have fixed my eyes on you because you will not fail me. My life is open to your numerous blessings. Please, don't let them elude me. I have asked, and I know that you've heard me. Thank you, Jesus, because you've answered my prayers. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen.